Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at Zookeeper and its ability to create composite nodes. A composite node is simply a group of nodes. So if you were to have a schematic view with a number of different nodes in it, you may want to take all those nodes and just group them into one node, and then still be able to edit them later. In its simplest form, that's what a composite node is. In Zookeeper, you can also take those composite nodes and expose different parameters in order for them to be available on the surface level. The last thing that you can do with composite nodes is create a composite template. Now, composite templates can be created with materials, scene setups, modifiers, rigs, or anything that you can make in 3ds Max. And it starts to allow you to build your own custom tools in Max very easily. So let's get started and take a look at some composite nodes. Here I have a scene set up with uh, just a basic skin shader. Let me just turn this view into an active shade view and we'll pipe this material into that ball. You can see the view update at the bottom and this simple skin shader that I've set up here with a fall off node, some uh, cellular and color correct maps, as well as a noise and a cell bump that's going on. Now we can adjust a lot of different things here like the bump, so I can bring that bump level up and you can see that happen right there. I'll just right click to bring it down to zero. You can see it adjust there or type back in 30 to bring it to where it was originally. Now I have all of these nodes that are contributing to the diffuse color and I might want to make them a composite node. So I'm just going to select them all and I'll just deselect that one. And it's pretty much as simple as right clicking and saying group to composite node. This makes all those nodes that I had in there bundled into this one node that I can then name whatever I like. This makes it much easier to navigate my schematic view, uh, zoom in and out, and adjust different parameters. And I can do that for these down here if I wish. Just say group to composite node and name it whatever I want. Now, if I want to edit any of those parameters, I can simply double click on either one of these. It will open up a new tab and here are all those parameters that are inside here. So let's say I wanted to go into the light color and adjust its output. I can bring that RGB level up to something that's really pretty bright and you see that update down here. So I'll just set that back to 1 and once I'm done editing I can just close this view and go back there. We can do the same with our noise layer as well. So pretty easy to group those composite nodes and get in and out of them. If at any point I don't want this to be a composite node anymore I can always explode it by just going to ungroup composite node and that's pretty easy to set up too. Now one of the nice things about these composite nodes is I can shift click and drag to create a copy of one. So now I have this skin color copy that I can pipe into whatever I want and you know it's very manageable as this one node. I'm just going to drag it over and choose self illumination and you can see that update right down here in the active shade. I'm going to pop in here to our Ornair Blin and set the use self illumination color. And then I'm going to insert a node just by clicking on this wire. We'll insert a color correct. And in that color correction map, I'll just adjust a couple things like the hue shift to be a little more on the red side. I'll pump up the saturation. And then I'll just drag down the brightness. And as you can see down here, we've added some self illumination to that skin shader. So I can turn that off just so you can kind of see the difference between those. So that's a pretty interesting use of uh, the composite nodes in order to make your life a little bit easier creating a material. So for right now, I think I'll just uh, delete these two and I'm going to ungroup this composite node because we'll come back to this and set up maybe a composite template a little bit later. So I'm going to ungroup this composite node and just tidy up that view. All right, let me close out of this. So composite nodes are great for setting up materials, as you can see here. Uh, and they're also great for setting up other schematic workflows that you would make in Max and in Zookeeper. So I'm just going to go into this uh, Ccomp tab and in my layers I'm going to hide uh, that shade and I'll unhide this uh, C group that I have, a uh, group of layers. So let's just take a quick look at what we have here. Um, I'll double click on our C object and you can see that I have a plane that has been set up with uh, a couple of different modifiers. And whether we look in the modifier stack, create this in Max or Zookeeper, it's pretty much the same. It's, it's pretty easy to see what's going on here though. We have a basic material with a fall off happening there. In our modifier stack, we have used a sphere object as a volume select. We've passed that up to 
tessellate and we're applying some noise to that entire plane. So basically this is a level of detail type of tessellation scenario and you can see that in this view here. If I just double click on the camera you can see that we have a camera here and there is here's our sphere that is making our volume select which is tessellating the area that the camera can see a little bit more. So we have you know for terrain or for sea something that's a little bit more detailed right in front of the camera but we don't have to tessellate that all the way out to the horizon. Um, so this is a real easy setup to make in 3ds Max or in Zookeeper and very simple for us to visualize here. Now this may be something that we want to use uh, quite often if we're on a production that does something like this or if we just find ourselves using a tool like this um, in our general everyday workflow. So one thing I'm going to do here before I create a composite node out of this is just go into this uh, volume object node and pipe it over to the camera and go into child nodes and then say add child node. So I'm just going to drag and drop that there and I'll move this camera down just so it's a little easier to see. So now uh, that volume select object is a child of this camera and when I move the camera you can see that that volume select object as well as the tessellate all follows along with that uh, which is all very good. So if I want to make this a template for me to use later I can simply select all of these nodes and I'm going to select everything but this object node which goes in to the volume object. Now I'll right click and say group as composite node. You can see what we get here is our composite node which I'm just going to name C test and the sphere which is the selection object that gets piped into that. So now I have this little composite node that I can use pretty much whenever I want. Uh, if I deselect this sphere and drag it out you'll see that I have that object node still open and if I move this you can see that that's not connected anymore. So what I'm going to do is just go over into layers and in this C helpers layer I also have a volume angle object that I created. So I'm going to drag that over and this is simply an extruded spline that creates a wedge instead of uh, just a basic sphere. This wedge will represent the uh, field of vision of the camera a little bit better and we'll see that when we pipe that in. So I'm going to pipe that object node right into our composite and when I go to select our camera you'll be able to see that that wedge is now used as the object for volume select that gets passed up to our tessellate and is used there. In order to make some other things available at the surface of this composite node I'm just going to double click and go inside and pick a few things. So we can already see that leaving that object node out of the composite this has been marked in yellow and I'm gonna just cruise up and make a couple other composite inputs and I can do that very easily by right clicking and choosing composite input. So I'm going to make the diffuse color of this shader a composite input and I'll go down into our noise and I'll just make the noise strength a composite input for that composite. So as easy as that we hop back over here and you can see that those parameters are all exposed within this composite node. So I can easily just click on this diffuse color and if I needed to make that see more green or anything else you can see that update automatically down there. So really easy access to any of those parameters.